Welcome to Lecture Online. Well, it turns out the exponential growth function can also be used in a way to express the exponential decay function. For example, things that ra radioactive things that radioactively decay can be written in such a way where the amount left, so the number remaining, n as a function of t, is equal to the initial function or the initial amount that we started with times e to the minus r times t. The only difference here is that we have a minus in the exponent instead of a plus. So when you see a minus there, the amount that you have actually declines exponentially instead of grows exponentially. So when you look at a graph, what that means is that normally an exponential function looks like this. So we could say that uh, if we want to write like this, the number as a function of time is equal to the initial amount. Of course, this here would be your initial amount times e to the rt. Now, what does it look like when we have a negative there, a ne negative in the exponent? Then the function will look like this. And this then represents n as a function of time is equal to the initial that we started with times e to the minus r times t. So we start with initial amount. You see that over time you have less and less and less of it. So that's what we get when we use the exponential growth function, but we put a negative in exponents instead of a positive. So it turns out that it expresses the decay of a, a substance instead of the growth of a substance. Now, with the information that we have here, we should be able to tell how much we have left of the substance after 25 hours. And the information here is that the substance decays to half of its original amount every six hours. So how much is left after 25 hours? So first, what we need to do is find the decay rate here, R. So we can say that N when t is equal to 6 is equal to 1 half the original amount. All right, that's what it says here, which means that if we start off, oh, well, let's start out by, with the whole thing. So we don't know what the original amount is, but let's say the original amount is the original amount, n sub naught. So what that means is we can say that 1 half the original amount after 6 hours is equal to the original amount times e to the minus r times, and of course, t would be the number of hours that it takes for us to get to have the original amount, which would be a 6 there. And so here what we can see is by saying that after 6 hours, the amount that we have is half what we started with, we can then therefore solve for r. The first thing we do is divide both sides by n sub naught. That's why it doesn't matter how much n sub naught is. And so now we can say that 1 half is equal to e to the minus 6 times r. And in this case, again, we take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of the left side, the natural log of 1 half, is equal to the natural log of e to the minus 6 times r. And of course, when you take the natural log of an exponential, that cancels out. And you can say that the natural log of 1 half is equal to minus 6 times r, or r is equal to uh, minus 1 over 6 times the natural log of one-half. So let's go ahead and see what that is equal to. So we take the natural log of one-half, 0.5, take the natural log, that's a negative number, multiply that times the negative one-sixth, so the negative disappears, divide by six, and we get r is equal to 0 0.11552, 552. You can just keep keep a few extra decimal places to get a more accurate answer. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug that back into our original equation. So our original equation now becomes the amount that you have left as the function of time is equal to the original amount, n sub naught, times e to the minus, instead of r, we write what r is equal to, which is 0 0.11552 times time. So this now becomes the equation we can use to find out how much we have left after 25 hours. All right, so let's plug in that number and see what we get. So the amount that we have left after 25 hours, or I like to write it like this, when t is equal to 25 is equal to the original amount, whatever that may be, because the answer is going to be in terms of the original amount, times e to the minus 0 0.11552 times, and of course we need to then plug in 25 there. So I still have the value, the exact value, to about 10 decimal places in my calculator for the value for r. I multiply that times 25. Make sure that's a negative. Then use as the exponent of e to the x. And that means 
that the amount that I have left after 25 hours is equal to 0 0.0557 times the original amount, which is 5.57% of n sub naught, which is the original amount. So that's how you find out how much you have left in the case that things are decaying rather than growing exponentially. So we use the general equation. Decay rate is usually a negative number there. We use the information given to find the value for r. We plug in the original equation to get an equation to be able to solve this particular problem. Then we plug in 25 hours for t, and we calculate the amount left in terms of the original amount. And that's how we use the exponential decay function, which is exactly the same as the exponential growth function, but with a negative here instead of a positive. And that's how it's done. Now what we need to do, oh, no, that's not called. So that's what we call the decay, hmm, what do we call it? 